When I was ordained priest a few years ago, my training incumbent uh, gifted me with a statue of St. John Vianney, the patron saint of parochial clergy, of parish priests. When we think of the patron saint of parish priests, we might think of someone uh, like a holy manager, somebody trained in business management and perhaps marketing. St. John Vianney, however, was nothing of the sort. Throughout his life, he displayed two main characteristics. The first one was the determination to follow the Lord Jesus. And the second one, a strong, burning love for the salvation of souls, for the salvation of people. I say determination because even from the earliest years of his life, him and his family had to travel for miles to attend Mass. The church had been persecuted and disrupted by the French Revolution, and St. John Vianney, as a teenager, received his first communion in a kitchen because churches had been shut. The determination, however, he demonstrated was also to follow that vocation to become a priest he received from God. Three times his studies were interrupted as a child by the French Revolution, then when he was drafted a soldier in the war between France and Spain, and then again when eventually he was a seminary because he found lectures delivered in Latin incredibly difficult. So he abandoned seminary, but he did not give up, and eventually he was ordained priest in 1815. Three years later, he was posted or installed uh, as the parish priest of a tiny speck of a village called Ar. The village counted about 230 inhabitants. And yet, he remained in that village as the faithful parish priest until 1859, the year of his death. The length of service, determination to be in one place, doesn't necessarily mean holiness. The other characteristic St. John Vianney demonstrated is, as I said, a burning love for souls. He would spend in the winter months 11 to 12 hours in the confessional, hearing confession, offering spiritual counsel, and in the summer months that would go up to 16 hours a day not just to his parishioners, but people who came from further afield. And towards the end of his life, 20,000 pilgrims would come to his village to confess to him or to hear his spiritual counsel, to pour out their hearts to a faithful pastor. 20,000 people a year. The longest time I've ever heard confession for was two hours, and I have no idea how he could manage to do that for 16 hours a day. The only explanation that I can think of is his personal holiness and the grace of God sustaining him through this wonderful ministry. St. John Vianney also fasted frequently and made penance for the people of his parish, for their conversion. In this, he made his own the words of the Lord Jesus in St. John's Gospel, where Christ says, For their sake I consecrate myself. With the help of a couple of lay women, he instituted a house for poor girls called La Providence, the Providence, 
a house where they could find material help as well as spiritual care. Finally, St. John Vianney also won countless people to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This he did through his quiet ministry, his ministry of spiritual counsel and confession, through his fasting and prayers. And he leaves us some very good words about new evangelization. He said this, So many souls we may convert with our prayers. There are some among them for whom one Our Father and one Hail Mary would be enough to turn the scale. So when we commemorate St. John Vianney, I hope you will pray for your parish priests, but I hope also you will be inspired to pray like he did for the conversion of our parishes. That more and more people may discover for themselves the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. May St. John Vianney pray for our parishes, for our clergy and for us all.